Hi folks, see you speaking again. Last time we started to talk about TTL circuits and I presented you a transistor and how to make a little inverter using one transistor. Remember the little dot inside the box, which is the actual transistor. This time we talk about the industrial inverter. So I have one plugged right here. So that little guy here is an industrial inverter. And when you pick up signals into the inverter, like here, I have a signal coming from the generator. Whatever signal is coming to the inverter, when you measure the output, the output, the blue shape, is exactly the opposite of the input one, which is the yellow. It's like the picture you see in a lake. So anytime the yellow goes up, the blue goes down. So input, which is the yellow, goes up, blue, the output, goes down. And opposite, when the yellow goes down, the blue goes up. So anytime you take a look at these pictures, they are right opposite to each other. This is the function of the inverter. But then remember that the inverter, I told you the actual industrial inverter is made of four transistors a couple of diodes and a bunch of resistors, okay? Now the problem is, the problem is they give you, they give you a black box like this one here, and they tell you, hey, you know what? Pick up this little black box and squeeze inside six of those, why? Because when they give you the black box, it gives you one with 14 terminals, 14 pins, seven for each side, okay? So if you take a look here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on each side, seven on the other side, and they tell you, hey, you have six such inverters, all of them are the same as the other one, okay? And you have six inside, now squeeze them all inside and make connections. So how this is gonna work? In order to identify what inverter goes where, what you find on all packages is a little thing here, a little opening, like if I'm picking up this one, you can clearly see it here on my left, this little opening, see? And when you take a look at it, on this little opening, this is called a notch. And this is only for the purpose to identify what is the pin number one in the total of 14 you have around the package. So the pin number one is right here. This is the pin number one on the bottom left. And then you count the, the other pins going like this, counterclockwise. So against the clock, okay? So this is the first inverter. There's the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. Because if you start to put pin numbers, seven, <coughs> you continue on this side counterclockwise, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Yes, there are bigger packages than this one with more than 14 packages, but this, this is the first one we're going to talk about. So then, how these things is going to work? They tell you, listen, every inverter here needs a power supply. So it's called VCC. So all these, they are coming all together in the same place on the pin 14. So you pick up all these and all they go to the pin 14. They also need something we call a negative or the ground. So they connect, they collect all the grounds together and they go on the pin seven. All the grounds together and they go on the pin seven. So in the moment you energize this package by connecting here the ground, you connect here the ground and here you connect the VCC, the positive five volts, okay? At the same moment you do this, all the six inverters are energized. There is no way you're going to energize only one inverter out of six. Either all the six or none of them. So now all the six are connected. But how can you use input and output? Because each of them has an input and an output. So the first inverter, the input is here on the pin one and the output is on the pin two. Second inverter, input pin three, output pin four. Third inverter, input pin five, output pin six. In the top, input is pin nine, output is pin eight. Input is pin 11, output is pin 10. And finally, the sixth one, input is on 13, output is on 12. 
That's how the links are done inside the box. But please take a look. That's a very simple diagram. We only have one inverter with four transistors and two diodes. And we may need to use all the six of them. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put on a paper one, two, three, four, five, six times four, 24 transistors is going to take a while. So I'm going to have a handkerchief for my diagram. It doesn't work like that in reality. Okay. So you know what's in the box right now. Let's put this one aside. So when you take a look from the top, like a hawk, what you know, you know the notch, you know how to identify the pin one. So this is gonna be two, three and so on. And the actual silicon chip containing all the six inverters is only this little thing in the middle of the package is a very tiny one, exactly like the dot of the transistor you've seen before. So from here, you're gonna have wiring coming all around like this. So that's how they make connections from the silicon chip in the middle of the package, like you have it cut horizontally. And from the little chip here, it goes all around. Why the package is so big with respect to the chip, we're going to talk some next time about that, because I'm going to be uh, uh, talking deeply about packages later on. This is just the introductory part to understand how the six inverters went actually inside the integrated circuit. That's how they go. Okay. So once we know that, and we know what the inverter is doing from the input to the output, everything is reversed. Now establish, let's establish some basic rules. First thing we're going to put here, the binary states. Remember the word, the keyword here is the binary. Unlike the decimal mathematical base, the binary has only two symbols. And in electronics, including the PLCs, the uh, engineers and mathematicians, they use different words to uh, signal to you if you can identify these two states. So according to what we know about switches, I'm going to make here two columns. And if you pick up a switch, you may have it off or you may have it on. In other words, on a piece of wire, you may have voltage or you may not have it. So this is currently used for contacts in the PLCs. Next, mathematicians, they use the words no, respectively yes. As you can see, the pattern is already there. You need pairs of words opposite to each other. Similar way is going to be here negative or positive. Nothing is really negative because everything is from zero to five volts. But just because the pair of words, they are opposite to each other, we use negative, positive, negative for no or for off, positive for yes or for on. Other words currently used, okay, they are the low state and the high state. Low state and high state. Sometimes you're going to find only the first two letters, and some other times in documentation, you're going to find only the first letter. And more importantly, mathematically speaking, zero and one. So this is about the math, okay? Because the zero and the one are the two symbols we assign for the numbers in the mathematical base called binary. So in the same way, if you go, you can find any pairs of words where the words are opposite to each other, and then you have the two states of the binary, okay? So if we do this and we understand what is the, what is the pattern, then the second thing we have to establish is instead of using the diagram of the inverter every time, they invented some symbols to replace the inverter. So I'm going to put you some symbols here, all of them using triangles. This one you already know is the symbol for a diode. There are different types of diodes. The most common of them is called a rectifier. 
because it's used in all circuits converting the AC into DC power. Another kind is this one, which is a Zener diode, diode, which is the basic small element allowing to keep uh, the voltage constant in a power supply. Then you may have another triangle like this. And this is the tunnel diode. Okay. And you may have this kind of triangle like that. This is the symbol for an antenna. Okay. Then you may have that symbol, which is pretty similar to this one, but this one is in electronics used when you want to say common or similar way. Instead of having a solid line, you may have this one, which is the symbol for the ground. Okay. And you may also have this one. So this one is for a varicap diode. It's the kind of diode replacing the variable capacitors in the radios, okay? So plenty of symbols, and they are, there are not all of them. I'm just going to stop here because I want to reach the symbols we need right now. I'm gonna put it bigger here. This symbol with two inputs, this is the operational amplifier, the op-amp. But the symbol I'm more interested about in logic circuits is this one. This is just the standard symbol for an amplifier. Okay? And remember what the inverter does, it reverses the signal be between the input and the output, so the output goes out of phase 180 degrees, so how do they signal this to us? It is the amplifier, and the bubble they draw at the output, this is actually telling inverter, or 180 degrees out of phase. So actually the bubble is the one interesting us. So what happens here? This is going to become the symbol, this one. We're using diagrams to replace all that. So instead of drawing four transistors, two diodes, and four resistors, every time you have an inverter, we only have to draw this one. But having all the list, actually, sorry, it's not all the list. You have the list of the most common uh, uh, symbols using triangles to identify what's interesting for us. That's the symbol for an amplifier, and there's the symbol for the actual inverter, okay? When you make them with one single transistor, here you may have something like a common collector uh, connection for the transistor, and then this one is a common emitter connection, but again, because the, uh, the inverter has to respect some very strict rules in electronics, we're gonna discuss that later, then, they put a bubble at the output of the triangle, and this is actually the symbol we use on uh, uh, American diagrams for the inverter, okay? So, um, an equivalent symbol for that in Europe is when they draw simply a rectangle, and when they do this, the little triangle at the output of it means the inverter. So here is the input, here is the output, here is the input, here is the output, that's the symbol we're going to use for the inverter. So far, so good. So, uh, I'm going to stop uh, for a week uh, the logic circuits because about one month ago, I published a video about how to measure the RPM of your PC fans very easily. So now, I built the project in a box. I put the project in a box and uh, I'm going to discuss this beauty which is a clamp where you can place your PC fan to measure the speed. And right here, 
the two sensors are going to measure and send the signal to the actual box to take measurements. So this is what we're going to go next week about. And then we go back to our logic surface. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.